Good afternoon everyone. This is Tony from Her Homestead Skills. Well, today's video hopefully is going to be a little bit lighter. I uh, finally, finally, finally had some success at the thrift shops. <laughs> I went to more than one and uh, serious disappointed with the first one, obviously. Like, uh, I go to them and I wonder if I'll ever see anything worthwhile again. But the last one that I went to, finally, I think I hit the jackpot. They had probably emptied somebody's home with all their cast iron. <laughs> and uh, quite a number of different pieces, and I will uh, show them all. But I did buy one. I almost bought two, but I already have a number of 8-inch or number 8 skillets. So I left that one there, and I think that that was an older... Um, lodge and the reason I believe that it was definitely I could see made in the USA and the number eight uh, the back was a bit rusted but the rest of it was in good shape actually the whole thing is in good shape a little bit of rust doesn't hurt anything it certainly wasn't uh, deep it was just surface rust but I was able to make out the number eight. I was able to make out Made in the USA, and it had uh, the ridge with three notches uh, cut out, and that's normally, well, that to me, that would tell me that that is likely a lodge, you know, and a uh, non-labeled lodge pan. I think they used to do that at, uh, uh, at some point. I guess they were sold in the more discount places without their name on them. But anyway, I did pick up a lodge pan, and I probably bought the most expensive one that they had there. Most of the um, cast iron pans, and they had all various sizes. They had some really nice ones, but there wasn't anything special. Uh, there were, you know, name brand unique or good, you know, good quality name brand that I'm looking for. Uh, once again, I have more cast iron than I need, so. I either pick up something special that I don't have or um, a really good quality name brand. And um, the, I did pick up a lodge pen that I don't have. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to run through some pictures that I took of the ones and they were all in the 13 to $15 range, which is not a bad price at all in all the various sizes. They were all in that price range. Unfortunately, the one that I wanted was the most expensive one on the shelf, and it was $20.99, but still a bargain. And, um, <laughs> and that is one of these. I don't have one of these, so um, what is it, a 10 inch with the uh, very thin lip. And it is a bit on the sticky side, so yeah, it does need a good cleaning, and um, perfect candidate for my lie bath when I get that going when the weather turns warmer. So I will set that aside. And yeah, the price was, I hope that can, yeah, $20.99. So not bad. I came home and I double checked and a new one would cost me $50. So it was uh, worth the buy. And you know, we can get these looking like new and acting like new without any trouble at all. So and it'll be good for another hundred years. So I have no qualms about that. I certainly, once I clean them up, I do look after them. I don't clean up all of them when I bring them home. I cleaned up a few that I use on a regular basis, but I don't use all the cast iron that I have. So, um, yeah, so it was a good buy. And I'm gonna go through some of the pictures and show you some of the other ones that I uh, looked at and saw and like I said there was quite a number of them today. There were also a few other things of interest but I always like to keep my spending to a minimum and if I find one nice item that I really like I'm happy. You know it's, it's uh, very few and far between these days so and uh, speaking of weather it was an absolutely gorgeous gorgeous day out there today. Um, let me see if I can. I think that the uh, temperature was in our estimation it was like what 13 14 degrees but in Fahrenheit because we still use Celsius here but in Fahrenheit it was 58 degrees which is a record for uh, here for this time of year and I'll take it 
I do understand though that it's going to be short-lived. <laughs> It'll be warm again tonight and probably tomorrow, but uh, probably by next week we're into cold weather and perhaps snow and rain and who knows what. But definitely this is uh, an anomaly. It's not uh, the norm, although we've had a very mild winter and I'm one of those people that would be very pleased with that. I know there's some people that like the snow and they like the cold. I do not. I'll take 58 degrees in February any day. So, and yeah, it's been a wild week. It appears as though world leaders are all coming into focus lately for <laughs> one thing or another. Trudeau has decided that he's going to set aside or promise a three billion dollars for health care. Now, Canada, when you start talking the B, <laughs> that's an unusual figure. Um, it's a lot of money. Uh, if, if the spending spree is uh, his way of getting back into the hearts and minds of uh, people, well, he can try it. So be it. That's been a tried and true means of getting people to support you, sadly. And Biden, I think that they're getting ready to implement the 25th Amendment, personally speaking. And I'm sure most of you know what the 25th is, and that is um, removing a sitting president. And probably that's the 25th is the only way that you can remove somebody who's decided he is going to run for the next election. And it's based on his inability to function properly. So, and, I, and I do believe that there, there are uh, moves in that direction. And uh, if and when that'll happen is another story. If they do remove him before the election, that means that the vice president becomes the president. Scary thought. And... Uh, I mean, it just it just goes from bad to worse. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, we'll see what happens there. And of course, uh, Trump looks like he'll be able to stay on the ballot. It does appear that way to many people, and there are those that are uh, think that that's a good thing, and there are those that are uh, terribly upset that he isn't just thrown off and. But I understand the reasoning. It really would not be right for uh, a, just a couple of states to decide who the president should be for the whole country. We have something like that in Canada. We have a three-party system, and, and Trudeau, Trudeau did not win the majority. Um, but he got support from one of the other parties, and we have more than three parties. We have. Uh, a specific um, party in Quebec, but we have three other major parties. So we have the Liberals, the Conservatives, and the NDP, and those are the three main parties. And then we have a Quebec party, which uh, really means nothing to me because I'm not in Quebec, but I guess if you're French-speaking and you live in Quebec, uh, you, you would vote for that party. And they do have uh, some power. And we also have a Green Party that probably has minuscule power, if any at all. Maybe they have one, one or two seats. I don't keep up with them. Um, but <clears throat> Trudeau is being supported by the third party. And um, apparently he's supposed to make concessions. And uh, he's been <laughs> uh, like giving people dental care and uh, drug, drug benefits and things like that. So in the health care but these are also things that at this point, I don't know if Canada can really afford more spending. And uh, so he's finding ways to try to make it look like he is um, following through with his promise to, to give that, um, to give dental care to seniors right now. He's doing the very, very old. Um, like, I don't know, I think you have to be 80 years old. And the last time I was at my dentist's office, I asked them if uh, they were going to um, 
be a part of this government plan and she said, no, no, no. <laughs> they probably will have specific um, dentists that uh, work under that plan, but they themselves are not going to, and I suspect many people will not be bothered with it. Okay, and uh, drug benefits. Well, we'll see what happens. Apparently that is the next promise that he's going to keep. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, so, yeah, that's, that's our friend Trudeau. And yes, we have the system where if that third party, the NDP, if they pulled their support, we could have an election like that. The only thing that's keeping Trudeau in power is the NDP, and a lot of people are very angry at the NDP for keeping Trudeau in power. So we'll see what happens. Um, so we, we could have an election. It's very doubtful. There's, there's personal reasons why the NDP would want to keep propping Trudeau up until 2025. And that's my little minuscule lesson, I guess, on Canadian politics. So yeah, because we don't have a two-party system, we have basically a three-party system. Somebody who, or some, some, one of the parties who does not get majority could still stay in power, unfortunately. So I think the idea of just a few states deciding who your president is going to be, who that would be really setting a dangerous precedent. I know how unhappy a lot of people in Canada are that just less than a third of them actually support the one who is in power right now. And that's really not good for the leader either. Uh, so it's better if he has a majority, he, she, whoever it is, it's better that they have a majority. But anyway, such is uh, the situation right now. Okay, so Trudeau's got his little thing on the go. <laughs> Biden's got his little issues going on right now that who knows what his situation is going to be like. It's pretty interesting, though. And, of course, uh, Trump's issues are <laughs> ongoing. And people like to create drama around Trump. Whether he wants to or not, they like to create drama around him. So, And, of course, then there is the Tucker Carlson and Russia thing. And I watched the whole thing it was fairly interesting and um, I don't necessarily support everything that Russia was saying but I don't necessarily uh, think that everything he's saying is um, wrong either and I do believe in dialogue and uh, the idea that you shut off dialogue and just throw bombs is really not a smart move. Um, and everyone knows that. So dialogue is always good, and the more they have of it, the less risk there is to the world as a whole. And yes, he even admitted, and he understands, that uh, it's a small world. And I've been saying that for a while. The world has changed. It takes no time at all for people to travel from one end to the other for what we do here affects somebody over there. I mean, look at all the farmers protesting. <laughs> did Canada start that? Perhaps we did. Perhaps the truckers protest just started. Uh, Europe is absolutely one country after another, after another, after another, and good for them. The people need to be heard, people need to be listened to, and dialogue is good. Our fearless leaders, heavy hammer, shutting people down and refusing to talk is what caused all the problems. Whether that is within a family member, whether that is within a country, or whether that is within a world, people have to communicate. And yes, sometimes it is a little bit hard to understand somebody's position and sometimes you don't want to understand somebody's position that's that's clear that's understood and obviously a lot of that happens but with dialogue and with time some of these barriers can be removed and 
we could have a more peaceful society. It will happen eventually. I know some people think no, but I think it will happen eventually. Whether it is after horrendous turmoil or whether it is willingly done is actually the only question. So anyway, okay, today was an awesome day for me. The weather was lovely. And I got this lovely, lovely, lovely little cast iron pan to add to my collection. It's a bit on the sticky side. Ugh. So I'm going to give it a quick, quick wash, but I'm not going to give it a huge wash unless I, I intend to use it. And I don't at this point. It's just going to be added to my collection. So anyway, this is Tony from Her Homestead Skills. And uh, lovely day. I think I should try and get out and enjoy the rest of it while I can. Have a great day. Thank you very much, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.